But first, I'm going to go to the freestyle mode. And I, I just did some setup. So here you can draw whatever you want. I just started with this setup to, to, for the sake of time. So you can put your pins, your bars, your rollers, your weights. So this bar basically has, let me activate the, oops, not the camera, five fingers, and three removes the camera. All right, so those are all hidden features of the program that I know. So can you see my finger now? Yeah. So these are, this is a pin, this is a roller, this is a weight, and we have the bar. Usually in my statics class, I give the students a structure and we ask them to compute the forces, but we already give them the design. So you know that we could design this truss like this to hold the load, or we could design this truss like this. And which one is better? Or what do you see more often? So more often you see the other way around, and I'm going to explain you today why. So I build my structure, so I will hit play. So let me also remove the the arrows, so we see colors, so we see the stresses. So in this structure, blue means compression, red means tension. The brighter the blue, the higher the compressive stress. The brighter the red, the higher the tensile stress, okay? So we see we have some bars under tension, under compression. So I'm going to start optimizing the bars under tension because we know that they can hold a, a big load. So let's make these bars lighter. So you see that the red started brighter. So now the weight is 40. So over here, we can follow the weight of the structure. So the mass is 40 kilograms. Uh, let's try to optimize a little bit more to see what we can get. 39, probably here, a little bit lower. 37, let me try to do that one. Now it yields and fails, okay? So that I went too far. So you see that we, you have all this iteration process that you can do. You can really test your structure, not only see what is going to be under tension and compression to see how to optimize it, but also see when it's going to fail. So this, the bottom bars are yielding and they fail. So there I went too much, so I have to make them wider. So we are back to where we were. So now I'm starting, so all the, all the red ones are the thinnest they can be, except by these two that are a little bit wider. So now I'm going to optimize the bars under compression. So let's take this top two the structure works, so we are down to 33 now. So we are tracking the weight of the structure all the time. So let's try it with these diagonals. Boom, they back off. So now they don't yield, they back off. Because these diagonals, if you see, they were under compression. So they're under compression, they back off. And if I try to do that with any other bar now under compression, they are all at their limit. So I, I did this problem before, so you can see if I try those, it back off. If I try the top one, they back off. So basically, with this given topology for the bridge, the best I can do for this loading is this, 33 kilograms of mass for this bridge, all right? So let's try to see now what happens if we try the other design, okay? So if we try the other design, we put this again. So the biggest difference is the diagonal bar that originally was under compression, now it's under tension, okay? So now it's not going to back on. That's the reason why you see this kind of structure and not the other way around, okay? So if we make them thinner now, so we went to 25, and it still works. So we went from 33 to 25, and even now the load, because it, that's another big concept in structural mechanics, is as you modify your structure, stresses are going to redistribute, right? So things are not going to work the way they were before. You can see that the load at the bottom two bars is lighter now, so there is a lower stress. So we can go down and make them thinner, and there we have. So we reach again the limit. We know that those under compressions were at the limit. So we achieve like a 33 percentage weight reduction, right, just by playing with the topology of the structure. So you can see how much of a big lesson you can do with your students when, when you allow them to explore whatever configuration they want, right? And you can explain many other concepts. So for example, if we want to make these parts thinner, they will buckle. But remember, I told you we can prevent buckling in two ways. We can make the bars beefier, which we don't want because it's going to be heavier, or we can, we can make them shorter. So how do we make bars shorter? Well, basically, we attach another bar to the, to the midpoint. So if I put another pin over there, let's say, and now I put a bar here, and this is just for support. So now we went from 23 to 
19, so we keep reducing the load, okay? And it doesn't buckle because now that bar over here became two shorter bars. And also, if you see the load on this diagonal bar that we added is almost zero. So that is called a zero force member. Of course, I'm trying to reduce a lot of things here in a lecture. These are things that we cover in many lectures, but these are really beautiful concepts because zero force members are in the structure and we never tell the students why they are there. So because they ask why it is there if it, the force is zero, it's not carrying any load. Well, it's there just to prevent the other guys from buckling, okay? So the, the job of this little guy in here is to, preventing, to prevent this guy over here from buckling, all right? So that is kind of like the way I usually do a lecture with my students. That is the first part, the first way I envision the app going. 